So, as was already said, uh, Voxbone, we sell telephone numbers wholesale from 50 countries worldwide. Uh, we have direct uh, PSDN interconnections in 13 countries, most of them SS7, some of them ISDN. Uh, we have five uh, GRE 11 Camellio clusters that we use as load balancers to spread traffic across 150 Asterisk 11 machines. Asterisk 11 is new. We just migrated from Asterisk 4 to Asterisk 11 uh, last November. Nobody noticed, thanks to the Asterisk test suite. That, uh, so thanks for that development. And we currently, at peak times, have 17,000 simultaneous calls going through our network. So, about me, uh, I've, uh, I've been doing with SIP uh, for 14 years now. Uh, most notable companies have been in, back in 2002, 2003 at Indigo Software, where I was developing uh, uh, for our SIP uh, proxy server and presence server in Java. Uh, I've been also working at Alcatel Lucent as, uh, in their uh, next generation networks department, uh, making SIP uh, well, pre-IMS solutions for various carriers. I have uh, been somehow managed to get my name cited on the SIP message, message RFC, uh, and I've also been contributing to uh, Jane SIP and Asterisk projects through patches, as well as uh, for writing the SIP T module in Camellia. So, what does the SIP T module uh, do? Uh, it, it doesn't matter whether you're dealing with SIP T or SIP I. Basically, in both of them, uh, you can have the SS7 message encapsulated into the body of the SIP invite or the 180 trying to like that. The idea of SIP T and SIP I is that if you're going from SS7 to SIP, back to SS7, and you want, don't want uh, to have any SS7 information bits lost, you can use uh, you can put the SS7 messages in the SIP, and all those special funky SS7 headers get preserved magically. Uh, so uh, what we did uh, is we wanted to be able to have Camellio be able to understand some of the SS7 messages and even modify it. And well, the first uh, attempt we did is that we just took uh, from the Asterisk project the libss 7 tried dumping it straight into uh, Asterisk, and tried to do stuff with it. Uh, that we kept in private. Since then, we've tried to just minimize the library to just the bits that we need. And I've exposed it now uh, as open source uh, thing that's in the Camellia project too. And another note is, uh, if you want to play with it, please be sure to use the latest version of Camellia 4.1.2. In 4.1.1, there is a major bug in it uh, that, okay, if you try to modify the assembly messages, they may become a bit corrupted. So uh, please use the latest version. So. What kind of use cases can you come up with? Uh, so one is uh, trying to fix number formatting. For example, have you ever had a carrier where they say, no, we cannot put the number in international format? Or even worse yet, they just paste the country code uh, in front of the numbers, and uh, even if it's international, so you get two country codes for the price of one. Uh, if, if they send an SS7 message, you can uh, try to fix it yourself. You can check the nature of address indicator in SS7 messages and see, Oh, this uh, number uh, is in national format, so I better add uh, the country code. In this case, uh, I know that the carrier in question is uh, Belgian, so I'm going to add the country code 32. And you can do the same for the from, and you can do the same with the crest you write, just based on the information you can do get from the SS7 messages. Another example you can do is uh, getting uh, CPC information from uh, toll-free numbers. You can uh, get uh, the calling party category from the SS7 message, and then you can add it to a special SS7 he uh, SIP header, or you can add it to uh, it is a URI parameter or something like that. And so then your uh, SIP equipment downstream can know uh, what the proper charging rate for a toll free call is. Uh, another case is you can uh, check the SS7 messages uh, for the privacy information. Does the caller want to have his identity withheld? And then you can do that, uh, see that, and then make sure that your SIP equipment is properly adding the privacy headers or doing the anonymization if they need it. And uh, lastly, this is and this is the case that Voxbone is using in our production is uh, for implementing local number portability. So in the UK, we have a case uh, where uh, there's no central portability database. You, if a number has been ported out. You get to call in, 
uh, and then you have to for see that the number is ported, you have to forward the number out, uh, and then you have to send the nature of address indicator with a special code of 126 to say it's uh, ported, and you add another prefix in front of the telephone number to say it's ported. And if you do not preserve all the special uh, headers of BT ISAP along the way, uh, BT will not like you. Uh, you want, they want to the, uh, the user to user preserve, and there's a few other special headers that are specific to UK they want to pre uh, preserve. So what we implemented uh, uh, was this. So we added a function SIPT destination, where you can add the new tele destination telephone number, uh, hops, and the nature of address indicator. Uh, how it's going to work is it, it's going to rewrite the uh, call party number to be destination. If there is no uh, a hop counter in, uh, in the SSM message, it's going to initialize it to the value of hops. Otherwise, it's going to, in the SSM message, decrement a, a hop counter as you a proper SSM uh, switch would. And it would set the nature of address indicator to whatever you want. So uh, here we have from uh, our incoming SSM, uh, SIPTS 7 gateway uh, the IM message with the nature of address 3 is the national number, pops 20. We can forward it on, adding uh, the porting prefix. We uh, add uh, the nature of address saying that it's a ported number. We decrement the hops counter. Uh, as far as uh, S7 land works uh, is concerned, Camellio is a full, proper, uh, class 5 SS7 switch, and everybody's happy. So uh, the questions are, uh, what can we do to this module uh, in the future? What can we add? What would you guys be interested in having added to the module is a more important question. Uh, one thing that we've played around with in the past is trying to implement advanced call forwarding scenarios uh, in it. Uh, for example, uh, you can have Canadia do a class 5 call forwarding where you can hear yeah, the IM, you have uh, the 181 with the number of the final destination. That's something that I think maybe is possible to implement with history info in SIP, but in general with diversion and stuff, uh, SIP does not uh, have any means of sending that information in the backwards direction. You have for the invite with the redirection information, uh, and then you, uh, you have to do another trick. Uh, it, not since you've already sent an ACM, the second uh, diversion header, you have to change the ACM to be a CPG. Why? I don't know. That's just ways S7 likes it, so you, you can make Camellio take care of that conversion too before it's sending it to the gateway, and establish a call. So then you can have uh, a class 5 call forwarding uh, in Camellio working. Is it, would anybody be interested in that? You let me know. Uh, but in order to pull this off, there's a bug in Camellio that we really need to be fixed. Uh, to implement this message here, uh, you need to be able to uh, send a reply with a body in Camellio. However, if you try to use the one method that exists in Camellio, uh, SL, uh, SL reply body, uh, you will crash. And here's a, a wonderful comment that you have in Camellio explaining uh, what this uh, method does. Uh, and this is the line that crashes, and I'm not sure what's the best way to fix this. I've mentioned this in 10 years, so... Yeah. Yeah. Julio is here. So he has the comment, but I don't know if he's today. Julio is today on Ah, ah he knew. Um. Okay, who is this? <laughs> you, you need to replace the body when you forward incoming... Uh... No, I, I want to generate uh, 181 of the body. Yeah, that should be possible with uh, append to body something or set uh, reply body. I'll have oh no, to but check. this is this is this is a new in message. This is not a message being forwarded. So you have to Camellia has to generate the reply and the yeah, body. Yeah, but should be there because I use it. It's something on TM uh, text ops module. Okay. It's a different one. The T reply with body is from CPX router after we fork it, and I haven't checked it. But we have one where you can give reply. Because we use it for um, HTTP, mm -hmm. we have HTTP request and then we send back with reply. Anyhow, okay. I'll so that's uh, another idea of uh, something that can be potentially implemented in it. Uh, so what other things uh, would people be interested in? Uh, these are other comments I ha have. Uh, ability to, uh, I, one question I have is every uh, one of these functions, 
if, if you want to get a piece of that sub message, you have to iterate through all of the bodies, find which is the right body, parse that sub message, get the field out, return it. And every time you call, you have to start from scratch. There is currently no, as far as I know, a good way to uh, parse and cache. So then, if something's already been parsed, you don't have to do the entire parsing all over again for the next operation. Uh, I would love to hear it if anybody has an idea of how we can uh, more efficiently parse bodies in Camellio. Uh, another thing is, okay, do you want to be able to add a, from scratch a new SSM message into the body? And that's where uh, Victor Seva's uh, multi-part patches that he's currently working on can potentially, uh, and he's waiting back there, can come in handy. Another thing is, and then is maybe you want to be able to add the user to user part, which might go in line with being able to add a, a sub message, because that can be useful for things such as German emergency services, where they have a requirement where you need to send an address in uh, the SS7 when you're making an emergency call. Uh, so, uh, and if there's ever more headers you're interested, I'm very welcome to receive patches of any other bits of SS7 you would like to see and be able to access uh, from inside Camellio. So thank you, and is there any questions? Yeah. Cool. <coughs> Guys, take it slow because we um, finished all. Thank yeah. you for Thank you for mentioning history info. <laughs> what do you want to do with it? Uh, with, with history info? Yes. Uh, well, it's not for me to do, it's whatever um, will make our upstream gateways happy. Is So right now, uh, uh, in the case of when we, we only did that uh, as call flow and testing, uh, but not all gateways are able to uh, do the right thing uh, when it comes to taking SIP and doing the right thing in terms of updating the SSM messages. So, uh, even if we have uh, gateways that understand what a, SIP, uh, a history info header is, uh, we cannot be guaranteed that they'll link, oh, we perhaps should generate uh, uh, a CPG uh, with that history info in it. So. Other questions? Do you still see a lot of SS7 out there? No. I haven't seen in my 10 years, last 10 years. Yeah. You have seen? Yeah, we, we, we use SSM. Can I have a quick question? Uh, uh, joking. Um, recently, you announced you're going into the mobile world. Are, are you planning to uh, extend your SS7 to include sort of the map bits and pieces? There's some really useful parameters in there. Uh, uh, what, uh, in which way? Uh, we have, in the context of uh, some of our new SS7 uh, stuff for getting SMS working, we've been playing um, uh, with getting uh, SMS as a map, but that's not going uh, by Camellia for that. What is... Yeah, the sort of thing I, I would really like to be able to do is to uh, initiate uh, an SRI SM from SIP, <laughs> for example. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about it later. Okay, sounds good. Any other questions? Come on, you need to plug your SS7 signal in your platform. Okay, thank you, Tori. Thank you.